Hi, my name is Amy Romeo, and I'm the founder of the jewelry making and craft blog amyromeo.com where I share lots of jewelry making tutorials and patterns with the Cricut crafting community. If you have a Cricut Joy and you've been feeling a little bit stuck because you think the Joy cannot cut faux leather, I'm here today to show you that you absolutely can. I'll be showing you how to cut faux leather and heat transfer vinyl with your Cricut Joy to make these beautiful butterfly earrings. I'll walk you through step by step every part of the process from cutting the faux leather to attaching the earring hooks. And I'll share lots of my tips and tricks with you along the way. So if you're ready to learn how to make butterfly earrings with your Cricut Joy, let's get started. Let's go over the tools and materials we'll be using to make butterfly earrings with the Cricut Joy. I'll be using the Cricut Joy with the standard fine point blade and the green cutting mat that the Joy comes with. For the faux leather, I'll be using a smooth faux leather from Amazon. It's available in a variety of colors and it cuts very nicely. You can use the Cricut Joy Smart Iron-On for this project, or you can use rolls of your favorite colors of heat transfer vinyl. You can use foil, you can use glitter heat transfer vinyl. It's really up to you. To press the heat transfer vinyl onto the faux leather, I'll be using my Easy Press Mini. You can use an Easy Press if you have it, or you can even use a home iron. To protect my pressing, I will be using a cover sheet. You can use parchment paper, or this is a piece of Teflon sheet that I've trimmed down to size. I'll use a heat pressing pad to protect my surface, as well as some blue painter's tape, a weeding tool, some small scissors, and a 1 16th inch hole punch that will help me get the perfect earring hole. For the earring hooks, I'll be showing you two different options. One is a traditional shepherd's earring hook, along with a jump ring, and for that you need to use two pair of flat nose jewelry making pliers. If you don't have pliers or you don't want to use pliers, that's okay. I'll be showing you another earring hook option that does not require any jewelry making tools. So if you're ready to learn how to make butterfly earrings with the Cricut Joy, let's get started. So the first step to making the earrings is to download the SVG template from my shop and I'll leave the link for you. There's a personal use version available and also a commercial license available option just in case you want to sell earrings made with the butterfly SVG. So you'll check out from my shop and you'll get an email to download the SVG and then you'll unzip the download folder so that you can upload the SVG to Cricut Design Space. And once you're in Cricut Design Space, you'll click on Upload and Upload Image, and you'll browse to the location where your SVG is unzipped. You'll click on it to select it, and then you'll see a preview of the wing template SVGs. Click Upload, and that will bring them here to your recent uploads row. Click on it to select it, and then add to Canvas. You'll see there are two versions of the butterfly wing template I've provided for you. One has pre-cut earring holes and one does not. I've given you this version also in case you wanted to use this design in a vinyl craft or a paper craft. But since we won't be using this one today, I'm going to delete this top set of butterfly wings. To do that, I'll click ungroup and then I'll use my cursor to just drag a box around the shapes I don't want to cut. I can either click the delete button or I can click delete here in the layers panel. If you wanted to change the colors of the vinyl that you'll be using for this project, you can click on the layers and click up here and choose a different material color. I don't recommend resizing these earring templates. They are perfectly sized and the hole is perfectly sized for earrings at this time. But if you make a test cut and you decide you want to change the, the size, you can do that by dragging a box around the shapes and either changing the arrow here or changing the size in the size box. Finally, it's important to check and make sure that the Joy is your selected machine. If you're cutting this project with the Joy, you need the Joy selection here so that you see the Joy specific prompts and material settings in the next screens. So when we're all set here, go ahead and click the Make It button. The Joy will first ask you how you plan to load your materials for this project. Know that this selection can be changed at any time for each mat in the next screen, so don't worry about this too much. But I will tell you, I always cut faux leather on a mat, and if I'm cutting vinyl, 
from a roll, I also choose on mat as my material selection. So that, that's what I'll choose today. If you are using Cricut Joy Smart Iron On, then you would choose without mat, which is the setting for the Cricut Smart Materials. So I'll click on the mat. And we'll see the four different mats that this project will cut on. The black mat will cut from faux leather and the three other layers will cut from the heat transfer vinyl of your choice. So the first step is to go through and mirror every mat. We mirror the mats because this project will cut, all these materials will cut face down in reverse. So mirroring helps the project assemble right and look right as a finished product. I'll click back here on the faux leather mat. I like to drag my faux leather shapes down a little away from the top and the edges of the mat because we will be taping our material down with blue painters tape. So while I'm on the screen, I like to make a note of what size material I want to put on the mat. It looks like I want a piece of faux leather about three inches wide and three inches tall. For the vinyl mats, I do like to drag them apart and separate them a little bit, which makes it easier when heat pressing these little shapes onto the earring wings. Now that I've done that, I will click back on the faux leather mat because that is the mat I want to cut first and I'll click continue. I always cut faux leather using the faux leather paper thin setting. If you don't have this setting, you can click on browse all materials, type faux leather and then it will appear. You can click on it to select it. I also cut faux leather using more pressure. So choose more from the drop down menu. If you need a reminder of where to place your faux leather on your mat, you can hover over your mats and you can see where your shapes will cut. So let me show you how to prepare the faux leather mat for cutting and we will cut it out and then we'll return to design space and we'll cut the vinyl layers. So we've made the material selection in Cricut Design Space and I've trimmed the faux leather to a size that I noted in Design Space about three inches wide and three inches tall. The back of the faux leather is sort of a felted black color. Some faux leathers have a white backing or a backing that isn't very attractive. So I wanted to show you an optional step that we can take before we cut the shapes to make the back look more finished and professional. And that is to put some heat transfer vinyl or in this case foil iron on on the back of the shapes before we cut. So the way that we do that is by cutting a piece of I'm using foil iron-on from Cricut. I cut a piece just slightly smaller than the faux leather shape and I'm going to put the foil iron-on the back onto the back side of the faux leather. I've got my Easy Press Mini set to the low setting and I'll use one of my cover sheets. This is just um, butcher paper or parchment paper cut to size and I'm just going to press the foil onto the back of the faux leather. You can check and see if the foil transferred nicely just by lifting up a little corner and starting to peel. To keep wrinkles out of your foil, it's best to keep the faux leather and the foil flat on your pressing pad and then peel away the cover sheet. I do like to repeat the press one more time without the cover sheet just to make sure that the foil is well adhered to the back of the faux leather. Now the material is secured onto the back and we can cut the, the shapes from this material as is. So I'll take my standard green cutting mat and I'm going to place the faux leather in the location I noted in the mat preview screen, which is about here. Then I'm going to use my blue painter's tape and tape the material down on all sides. Now that the faux leather is on our mat, pretty side down with the foil side up and all taped, we're ready to load this into the joy. Once your mat is properly loaded, then Design Space will show you a go button on your screen and you'll click the go button to begin the cut.
When I'm cutting faux leather with the Joy, I always like to repeat the cut. So return to Design Space and your screen will show you the option to either unload the mat or rerun the cut. I like to rerun the cut at least one time, so I'll do that now. It may be necessary to repeat the cut a third time with the Joy, but I always like to take my sharp weeding tool and just double check, sort of get underneath and see if the cut went through all the way. If it didn't, you can rerun the cut again as many times as you need to. But this looks pretty good, so I will go ahead and unload the mat using the prompt on the Design Space screen. And then I'll use my sharp weeding tool to remove the shapes from the mat. Now that I've removed the shapes from the mat, there is a little bit of an edging that I want to smooth out, so I will press these again one more time. I'll use my Easy Press Mini. If you're using a traditional Easy Press, I recommend starting at about 275 degrees and pressing in five to seven second bursts of time and checking. Faux leather does have a tendency to overheat and bubble if your heat is too high or your pressure is too high. So it's best when using an iron or an Easy Press to start with a lower temperature and lower time and work your way up. So I'll just cover this quickly. And just smooth out those edges. Now that I've smoothed out the edges, I wanted to show you, it's a little hard to see, but the Cricut did not cut the earring hole all the way, but that's okay because I will be using my 1 16th inch earring hole to punch in the exact same location to make a perfect hole. I do like when the Cricut marks the hole so that I know where to punch. You can also use a sharp weeding tool to make the earring hole and punch it through if you don't have a 1 16th inch hole punch. So let's return to Design Space and I'll show you how to cut out the vinyl mats. We'll weed the vital and we'll press them onto the earrings. Now that we've cut the faux leather mat, it's time to cut the heat transfer vinyl mats. And the material setting you choose will really depend on the specific heat transfer vinyl that you've chosen for your project. I'll be cutting the purple layer and the pink layer from Cricut Everyday Iron-On. And so Everyday Iron-On is a material setting here in Design Space. If you don't have it selected already, you can click on Browse All Materials and search for it. When I cut the pink mat from Glitter Heat Transfer Vinyl, I will be using the Glitter Iron-On setting. And if you're using Cricut Smart Iron-On, there are settings for regular Smart Iron-On and Smart Iron-On Glitter. Whatever heat transfer vinyl setting you choose, I recommend using the default pressure. So I will go ahead and show you how to prepare this first mat to cut, and then we will repeat that process with the other two mats. After you cut your mat, you'll return to Design Space and it will prompt you to cut your third mat and your fourth mat. I've trimmed a piece of Everyday Iron-On vinyl and I'm gonna put it shiny side down on my green mat in the location as shown on the mat preview screen. For this mat, I've selected Everyday Iron-On as my material setting. I'll load the mat. And then click the Go button to begin the cut. After the cut is complete, I'll click on the menu prompt and unload the mat. It's a little hard to see, but I'll remove the vinyl and I'll use my sharp weeding tool to weed away the excess. I wanna cut these shapes apart, trim off any excess here. When I trim, I don't wanna to cut too close to the shapes. I wanna leave as much of a clear transfer tape border as I can. And what this is gonna do is keep the faux leather from getting creases on it with the um, transfer tape pressing down on it. So I'm gonna trim this and leave as much border as I can. And this layer is ready to go. Now I'm going to return to Design Space and cut my other two mats, the Everyday Iron-On in the light pink, and I'll be cutting the Glitter Heat Transfer Vinyl using the Glitter Vinyl setting. I'll weed these designs out and then we'll be ready to press and assemble the earrings. So I have all of my 
vinyl layers separated, cut apart, and I've also looked back in Cricut Design Space at the Butterfly Earring SVG to sort of lay out which one is the left, which one's going on the right, and which one is the top, the middle, and the bottom layer. So I've got my Easy Press Mini again on the low setting, and I'm just going to begin by pressing each of these layers of vinyl onto the faux leather. So I like to start, for the butterfly earrings, I like to start with the top part of the earring first. And again, you'll want to refer to the image and design space. There is a little black border in the design around the glitter. It's a little hard to see, but it's easier to see on your canvas. So you'll want to place your vinyl in the same position as you see it in design space. I've got these ready to press. Again, you can use a little piece of parchment paper or butcher paper. This time I'll show you the Teflon sheet. These are those larger sheets that you buy for making t-shirts and I've just trimmed it down to size. After pressing for about five to seven seconds, remove your cover sheet and very slowly peel away the top layer and then you'll see the vinyl has adhered to the faux leather. If it didn't, then just put the transfer sheet right back down and press for a few more seconds. See that one did not press, so we will press that one again. Now that we have the first layer of vinyl on, it will help us fit the second and the third layers together like puzzle pieces. And there we go. The vinyl layers are pressed onto the faux leather butterfly. Let me show you the back with the pretty rose gold foil. Now it's time to punch the earring holes and attach the earring hooks. So as I mentioned, you can use a sharp weeding tool to punch the hole. I like to use a 1 16th inch earring, a 1 16th hole punch. It's not an earring punch, it's just a paper punch, but it has the perfect size hole. So I'm gonna show you here it's a little hard to see, but you'll you'll place the little punch right where the whole shape was in design space and just punch. If you need to, you can use your small scissors to trim off the back of the hole. And then once you've done one earring, I like to put them front to front so that I'm able to mark the hole and get the hole in the other earring in the exact same place. Now that the earring holes are made and ready to go, I'm gonna show you two different ways to put on the earring hooks. The first is by using a traditional shepherd's hook earring. And on these, the bottom loop needs to be turned with pliers so that our, the earrings will hang straight. I'll show you how to do that. And we'll also be using some six millimeter size jump rings to attach the butterfly wings to the hook. To change the direction of the bottom earring loop, grip the earring hook tightly between your thumb and your forefinger and using flat nose jewelry making pliers, grip the loop of the earring and turn 90 degrees. And that will turn the earring hook loop into the correct direction. Now that we've done that, we'll want to open our jump rings. And I like to use two pair of flat nose pliers to do this. With the opening of the jump ring up at the 12 o'clock position, I like to hold one side of the jump ring with one pair of pliers and the other side of the jump ring with another pair of pliers and just twist one wrist to open the jump ring. And then I will thread the jump ring through the hole in the earring and attach the earring hook, making sure it's going in the right direction. And then using that second pair of pliers again, just close up the jump ring. Now, if you don't want to use tools or you don't have jewelry making tools, that's okay. There are these earring hooks called ball ear wire hooks. These are from Amazon. They're also available at Hobby Lobby and Michaels and other craft stores. This earring hook doesn't require any jewelry making tools. All you need to do is thread the earring onto the hook and then pinch this little part a little bit tighter so that you don't lose your earring shape. So I'll show you how that works. And right here, we'll just 
pinch it closed. And that's it. The butterfly earrings made with the Cricut Joy are complete. I hope you liked this video and you're going to try making some butterfly wing earrings yourself. Remember, I will have a link for you to grab this original earring template from my shop. Also on my blog at amyromeo.com, I have a freebies library filled with earring SVGs that I know you're going to love. So I'll leave a link for you in the description, how you can get the password and the link to my library emailed to you instantly. And I can't wait to see what you pick out from the library and create yourself. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.